Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo and this is part three of the ultimate smart home guide for 2020. So here's the recap of what we discussed so far. In part zero of the guide was just an overview of the guide itself, what it's gonna cover in each of the segments. Part one was what is a smart home and part two was what are the benefits of a smart home. In part three of the smart home guide, which is this video, I'm gonna go over the different types of smart home devices that exist that you can add to your own home. Surprisingly, or maybe not, there aren't really all that many different types of smart home devices. While your home may have a ton of different appliances and household devices, a lot of these can't really be transformed to smart home devices as of yet and are kind of considered dumb devices. These are things like your household appliances, like your laundry, your oven, your refrigerator, toaster, microwave, stuff like that. As I mentioned in the previous video, the smart home landscape is changing rather quickly. And what this means is just because there's not a smart version of a device today, doesn't mean that it's not gonna be one next year. There are also just certain aspects of a home that you might not necessarily want to be connected. Like your oven, for example, as great as it may be to be able to remotely, you know, preheat or something like that, the safety sort of point of view might make you reconsider. Now I categorize smart home devices into two categories. You've got your sort of main devices and your accessory devices. Main devices are the ones that you kind of directly control and those are things like your lights, thermostat, TV, smart switches, security cameras, smart locks, and smart plugs. And that's by no means a complete list, but that is pretty much everything that you might consider a main smart home device. Accessory devices are devices that will sort of tie in and work in conjunction with the main devices. Things like sensors, buttons, centralized tablets, or even smart speakers. Now, this distinction between a main device and accessory device is just something I've purely come up with and where you categorize a specific um, device really doesn't matter at all. I put them each into those categories mainly based on order in which you would purchase something. For example, you would probably buy smart lights before you bought a motion sensor. Lights are very simple to control and are among the first devices that people buy for their smart homes. I put this alongside with smart plugs as well because they are very sort of binary in their operation. They're either on or they're off. You can control your lighting in one of two ways, either with smart light bulbs or smart light switches or dimmers. I have a whole separate video and article that kind of goes over the merits of each of these that you can look in the description below. Lighting also has several subcategories such as color lights, accent lights, and then you've also got sort of decorative light fixtures such as LifeX beams or the Nanoleaf Aurora panels. Smart switches don't only have to control lights because sometimes the switch is connected to an outlet, so whatever you plug into that outlet can then also just be controlled by a smart switch. Thermostats, like I've mentioned before, are another top level smart home device and are also the main one that will actually save you any sort of money. They're also among the first devices that became popular, notably the Nest thermostat. Smart locks are also great to ensure that you never get locked out again. They also have awesome features such as one-time code for guests and the ability to lock or unlock remotely. Some even have cool features like codes that only work at certain times. So for example, if you have a dog walker that comes every day at noon, then maybe their code will only work between the hours of 11.45 and one o'clock. Smart locks have a lot of different design options. You can get them with keypads, without keypads. You can get them with um, an actual physical key slot and some without, a lot of options there. I mentioned smart plugs are also incredibly common because they just turn something on or off and are usually used to plug in something that can just automatically work on its own. For example, you can plug it into your TV, you can plug it into your game console, coffee maker, kind of whatever. Smart cameras and smart doorbells are great because then you will get a notification every time someone's at your door and you can just remotely look at who is at your door and if you have a smart lock, you might even be able to remotely let them in. And then of course, there are the accessory devices that I mentioned earlier. For example, you can have motion sensors, contact sensors, uh, water leak sensors, Buttons and remotes are one of my favorite smart home accessory devices because they can be used as a physical way of controlling a smart home device. As an example, the Hue dimmer remote has four separate buttons that you can program individually. So each button can then turn on a specific light or come up with a specific scene that you've already set up. And I find that it's the easiest way to interact with smart lights. 
So between the main devices that I went over and some of those accessory ones, that kind of covers the majority of things that you can buy for a smart home. Again, this is by no means a complete list, but these are the things that you'll most likely encounter and most likely set up in your smart home. I mentioned in the previous videos that adding convenience is one of the main things when it comes to smart homes. And for that reason, we have to come up with convenient ways of controlling all these smart home devices. And that's what we're gonna talk about next in part four of the Ultimate Smart Home Guide, how to control smart home devices. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit that like and subscribe button. As I've mentioned, these videos come out on a weekly basis, so make sure to hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on the next installment of the Ultimate Smart Home Guide. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear your feedback because I am making this for you guys so that you will be as informed as you can be in the world of smart homes. And as always, until next time, see ya.